Welcome, Elin Jan. Salbonan. The delusion of human greatness or the illusion of human greatness comes broadly in two types. It is the pervasive nature of those that say God. When they say God, they're speaking about the real or creator that God has spoken to them. And therefore they claim to be special and to be carrying a calling. And also it comes from uh, scientists who come across filled with arrogance and a dismissive spirit of anybody who does not kowtow to their technology or their uh, developments. It is clear that is hubris is at play here. Now, the question that we need to discuss here is what would the nameless not a being or spirit creator possibly do to stop so law to speak to mad, to human uh, beings? Even though at the end of the day they cannot even fathom the depths of their own consciousness or of this universe. In our book, Free From God, we deal with these gods as all well. deal with the scientists and we deal with the universe as we confront an uncomfortable truth that humanity ignores in its hubris and it is detrimental to all we need to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that this mind-blowing universe is actually very tiny, very small. Before we proceed, we invite you to enroll into Bound University and study Bound Foundations and Mysteries, as well as also like our video, share our video, so that we can break the jinx that has been thrown on our channel because of the message that we are sharing. The paradox of cosmic significance and human consciousness is what we want to look at initially because the scale of the universe, the observable universe, is just like a grain of sand in a vastly larger reality. Consider it like a small grain that you pick on any part of the earth. That's the universe. That's our universe which contains approximately countless atoms and also in comparison countless universes are all over the shore. So just imagine that, that uh, this is the present size of observable universe about 46 billion light years and uh, presently we can reach that but the whole universe is just like a small grain of sand. The arrogance of religion and science falls apart when this scale is given its position in understanding. Our entire observable universe with its billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars, yet this might just be less significant than just a grain of sand on an infinite beach. Here's the job dropping part. That grain of sand itself contains billions of atoms, each with its own quantum dense of electrons. This is where we are caught in an infinite regression, both inwards and outwards. And the religion and science has placed prison bars to stop you from understanding something that is significant. The mathematics of insignificance. When we try to measure our place in this vastness, we hit a wall of incomprehension. If our universe is billions and billions of years across, and if it's just like a grain of sand, then the scales of true reality would be so vast that even our mathematical rotation fails. It would be like trying to measure the volume of waters in all the oceans using a thimble. To explain this, those that claim to speak to the real creator tell us just to believe. And scientists, they tell us that we just evolved. What a travesty of understanding for a free mind needed here to be opened. Because then we look at the consciousness paradox. Or seemingly tiny consciousness is capable of contemplating vast, vast, vast amounts of data and vast amounts of of reality 
We can imagine multiple universes and grasp quantum mechanics and ponder infinity. How can something so small, smaller than the grain of sand, smaller than anything that you can think of, contain so vast concepts? It's like finding an entire ocean inside a droplet of water. It is a gift to know that our mind-blowing universe is actually small. And uh, this knowledge is the hidden revelation and it considers a number of logical progression. If our universe is infinitesimally small, in true reality and our consciousness can conceive of realities far beyond our universe, then our consciousness itself might not be bound by physical limitations. There's a condition there. Therefore, consciousness might be connected to something far more fundamental than physical reality. However, if you have fallen victim to the men of God, to the prophets, to the Christians, to the imams, to the rabbis, who claim to speak to God, and by God they are referencing the unknowable creator, one with no name, the one with no gender, one who is not a spirit or a being, and that this one has revealed divine truth to them, you have automatically imprisoned your consciousness to their frequency and to them, and your divine spark has gone to sleep. You need to go with ancestral echo. Our ancient ancestors shockingly revealed truths that are vast and that have been ignored by religion and the science is coming to grasp with some of these truths. In ancient Hamid, our priest spoke of Amen, the hidden one. African sages refused to depict the ultimate creator. They weren't expressing primitive limitations then. They were demonstrating profound cosmic insight. They recognized that any attempt to name or depict the ultimate reality would be like an ant trying to draw the universe. Yet your preachers, your rabbis, your imams teach you that these same ancestors were primitive and ignorant and they were demon worshippers. They wrote under the inspiration of the gods that none of the gods knew the true form of the unknowable creator. His image is not found unfolded in the papyrus raw. Nothing certain is testified about him. This is what our ancestors say. So we are speaking of the unknowable real creator beyond your God, your Allah, your Jesus, your Buddha or anybody. It is written that the hidden one the mysterious of form, the one who is in his form as the hidden one, the one who is hidden of aspect, mysterious of form. Here is where true wisdom is found. The ultimate implication of mastering that this mind-blowing universe is actually small and fails the most profound realization that is done by your divine spark when it remembers and when it becomes awake to the concept of the real creator who is truly unknowable and our universe which is infinitesimally small compared to the reality then our current understanding of existence might be comparable to a two-dimensional uh, being trying to comprehend a three-dimensional or five-dimensional or six-dimensional entity or event then it is not just limited but fundamentally incapable of grasping that full picture. This leads us to a paradigm shift. Perhaps true wisdom lies not in claiming to understand the ultimate reality but in embracing our inability to comprehend it. Our greatest achievement might be recognizing the magnitude of what we do not know. This realization of what we do not know and what we cannot know and what we will never know should make your hair bristle, your body vibrate. Because the very ability to comprehend our cosmic insignificance is itself the evidence of our connection to something far vaster and more incomprehensible than we can imagine. This is not philosophical meandering. It's a logical progression that leads to a stunning conclusion. Why our consciousness is enabled to contemplate these vast concepts proves that it is a tiny fragment of something far more profound that our than our physical universe and that it passed through the chasm through the waters of Nyu to us via the gods. We are not insignificant because we are small. 
We are extraordinary because we can comprehend our smallness. The real creator isn't just hidden, just like what our ancestors taught. Is hidden behind veils and veils of infinity. That is what our minds can sense, but can never fully fathom or open or part. It is that sensing, that very awareness, which is the most profound aspect, a proof of an awakened soul, a proof of a divine spark that is glowing. This isn't just food for thought. It's a complete restructuring of how you should view your consciousness and reality and your place in whatever lies beyond our cosmic grain of sand. Look at these implications now. Some scientists now, today, and some philosophers are rediscovering what our ancient ancestors taught and knew that the ultimate nature of reality is beyond human comprehension. This is what animism teaches. When you see animism, think of quantum science in its developmental stage, not maturity. It will mature to animism later. Because our ancestors taught that the real creator is remote. Why these Christians teach that their God can be seen? Because you have seen Jesus, you have seen God, and some one wrestled with God in a wrestling match. Our consciousness, which is so small, regularly contemplates concepts that dwarf our physical universe. Think about that. Our consciousness, which is so small, must regularly contemplate concepts that are that dwarf this physical universe and perhaps we are not unique because we are special but because we can recognize how unspecial we are here's the final tip and the crushing truth nothing exists at all this is a merciless realization that even the universe itself is insignificant even if there are multiverses stacked one upon another in infinite array, they too are but a footnote in the infinite expanse of reality. That grain of sand. The creator, if such a term can even be used and applied, dwells, if that again can be used, in a realm so far beyond our comprehension that it may as well not exist at all. Think about that. Just think about that. In the face of this truth, humanity's claim to divine favor, to cosmic importance, or ultimate purpose dissolves like mist under the morning sun. We are nothing, and so is this universe. But in this nothingness lies your freedom, lies our freedom. The freedom to exist without pretense, to marvel at the infinite without needing to own it, and to let go of the need to be more than what we are. In conclusion, this lesson here is that uh, we must stop pretending like Christians, like Jews, like Muslims, and like many others of what we are not. Christians say if you are born again, you are in heaven already. When you are on earth, what a lie. Let us live with humility, not arrogance, with wonder, not entitlement. Anything less is an insult to the vast unknowable reality that birthed us and we one day may actually forget us because we have not lived by my art. As a call to humility, the cosmos has no obligation to acknowledge us, let alone revolve around us. If anything, its vast indifference should shatter the illusion of our grandeur. Ancient traditions such as those taught by our ancestors in Hamid and many other parts on earth and in Africa grasped this truth. They revered intermediaries, gods, ancestors, spirits, not out of ignorance, but out of wisdom. They knew that the ultimate creator was too vast, to go, too hidden, too far for us to worship directly. They never bothered. Why should you bother? If you want to learn more about these things, join us and enroll for Bandu University courses. And just like our ancestors and wise ancestors who knew better, we will be able to understand why we should call the Creator Amen, the hidden one, acknowledging that the true source of existence could never be known, let alone spoken to. Ancient African sages understood this as well 
is they could and then they refused to cave a single statue that was dedicated to the unknowable one they knew that that alone that action alone even that imagination alone was an insult and even to try to do that was just an insult yes enroll into our bad foundation subscribe to our channel like our videos share them let us walk this journey together because the future is full of African heritage restoration activities where our Bantu identity, where we awaken to ancient African civilization and mysteries and explore the power of our divine spark. Yohama Nature to Pipiti Chara by LM Dizu Kutikani Mijakanja says, wait, stay well, till we meet again, stay cool, know thyself. Ameni, Ameni, Amenua.